Hello again. Well, here's a, another good one for the yes or no treatment. The question is, does Prince Andrew have a future? Well, first of all, there's a lot of uh, detail I've got to get out of the way here at the outset, so I hope you'll forgive me if I read some of it, uh, that there's quite a lot. We all know, of course, that Andrew Albert Christian Edward, who was born on the 19th of February, 1960, the uh, second son of uh, Queen Elizabeth and the recently departed Duke of Edinburgh, uh, and also the uh, eighth in line of succession to the, to the throne of the United Kingdom. And he is Prince Andrew, we all know that, the Duke of York, Royal Knight of the Most Noble Order of the Garter, Knight Grand Cross of the Royal Victorian Order, Canadian Forces Decoration, Personal Aide de Camp, Earl of Inverness, Baron Killeley and a Vice Admiral of the Royal Navy. Well, uh, that's enough to keep him busy, I would think. That is, if those positions uh, have a job description associated with them. But in any case, uh, that's that's who we're talking about. And uh, what do I mean? Does he have a future? Well. I guess the question here is whether or not he will be uh, reinstated, whether he will be rehabilitated, whether it will go back to business as usual, or is he in the position of remaining as a kind of hmm, outcast, uh, uh, someone that they want to kind of keep in the background because he's too much of an embarrassment. That's really the question. Okay, uh, well, let's proceed. Let's talk, first of all, as I usually do, about the yes people, those who say, yes, he, he does indeed have a future. I suppose the first and most obvious argument to make there in support of that is the notion that, well, it'll all blow over. It always does. Uh, uh, these situations have uh, risen from time to time in, at Buckingham Palace, and and this is no exception, so we just have to kind of wait it out, and it'll it'll go away, and then and everything will be back as usual. We'll have to kind of go slowly and and bring things back a bit uh, at a at a stately pace. <laughs> but uh, uh, he does have a future. He's just going to have to be a bit patient. A another point here is that by being rehabilitated and coming back, what we really mean is. Will he be undertaking royal engagements? He, al he already has all those titles, but will he be undertaking royal engagements? Will he have official duties? Now, uh, as we all know, these are very important to the royal family uh, because it means they're seen to be working, to doing something to justify the uh, rather large cost of maintaining them. So. Uh, those royal engagements are kind of like a job. Um, everybody should have a job, otherwise, uh, why should we pay them? So, so there is a bit of that logic. So what that says is that there's a high priority in getting anyone with all those titles and privileges uh, to work uh, doing engagements. Now, of course, uh, there is an argument that says that Andrew can be replaced, and in fact, some of his uh, former responsibilities have been undertaken by other other members of the royal family. So that one is not necessarily automatically a support for um, his rehabilitation, but it's, it's certainly a factor in question. And then, and, and I guess finally I must say that, that uh, I think the royal family, uh, probably in, in line with other royal families elsewhere, has been kind of casual about sexual adventurism and that kind of thing. Uh, it kind of seems to go with the territory, uh, no big deal. So uh, his uh, relationship uh, with uh, Jeffrey Epstein, although mm, kind of regrettable, is, isn't really a, a knockout blow. Um, so there you have it. Uh, there's a lot of reasons to think that uh, uh, he can come back. Um, that he'll be back in his old uh, kind of format, uh, particularly uh, doing engagements, uh, representing the, the crown and so forth. Uh, 
And uh, these things always blow over eventually, and this will be no exception. Okay, that's the, that's the yes argument. What about those who say, no, no, it won't. Uh, he won't come back, he can't come back. So what are the reasons for saying that? Well, first of all, uh, we are living right now as, as I speak in, in April of 2021, we're living in an era, era where we are more and more impatient with sleaze, uh, with privileged people taking advantage of their positions to, to engage in dodgy affairs. We have uh, right now uh, quite a big objection to uh, former senior civil servants also uh, advising companies for large fees without uh, disclosing the fact. We've got the same thing with politicians, even a former prime minister who apparently was involved in some relationships which exploited his past position, which hasn't been disclosed, apparently. Um, and we're, we're getting pretty impatient with that. We had this whole thing with members of parliament uh, padding their expenses a while back. Uh, great embarrassment, it was finally exposed after huge efforts on the part of, of parliament to hide the, hide the facts and the details, but we learned about the MP who had the duck house on his estate uh, uh, repaired at, at uh, public expense and that kind of thing. So it, we're less and less willing to put up with that. and, and uh, Prince Andrew has been rife in this. He, he set up a, a business, a, an organization uh, called Pitch at the Palace as a kind of counter, I think, to Prince Charles, Prince's Trust, to encourage, uh, you know, the establishment of entrepreneurial businesses, uh, give people a chance, sounds pretty good, until we found out that he had a cut in these things. I, I couldn't believe it when I heard that. Uh, and, uh, and of course, that was not disclosed. It only came out with some papers were, were revealed. Uh, he also, uh, Prince Andrew has also had relationships with a lot of dodgy uh, people from dodgy countries. Uh, and of course, the spectacular uh, event that took place was when he sold his otherwise abandoned house, affectionately known as South Yorks, to a chap from uh, one of the stands, <laughs> uh, the, and uh, himself a dodgy character uh, for a very large sum of money, and the chap didn't even bother to live in the house. In fact, he let it fall down. So, uh, uh, what's going on with this chap? He seems to get involved in just unpleasant things to simply enrich himself, um, and. Uh, uh, of course, the royal family itself is very rich. Uh, Andrew himself, uh, when the Queen dies, no doubt, will have a, some quite a substantial inheritance. Uh, and so, uh, what is this about his um, uh, interest in involving himself in, in affairs, which really, when you think about it, are pretty awful once exposed? I mean, it of course not only exposes the fact that he's, to be honest, greedy, uh, but also really lacks judgment. Uh, you know, these sorts of things, I guess he assumed nobody would ever care uh, because he's been so indulged in the past. Well, uh, the public really doesn't like that and is increasingly impatient with that sort of thing and would therefore, it's a very good reason for the public therefore really objecting to his uh, rehabilitation. Then we, then we have the whole subject of Prince Charles and his attitude toward the monarchy and how he's going to behave as monarch when his mother dies. Uh, Prince Charles has long been impatient and uh, quite censorious about uh, Andrew's behavior. Uh, he knew about the relationship with Jeffrey Epstein, was appalled by that. Uh, and has been working to kind of push Andrew aside and get him off the balcony <laughs> uh, for the big photo shoots uh, and was probably instrumental in uh, Andrew, quote, stepping back from royal duties uh, after the disastrous BBC interview with Emily Mathis. Uh, so Charles wants and has announced his intention to wanting 
uh, a quote slim down monarchy fewer people on the federal on the uh, national payroll on the uh, on the balcony uh, and being acknowledged as the most important people in the royal family I think Charles is determined to push him aside so that when Charles finally does take office even if the Queen rehabilitates her favorite at some point in the next couple of years uh, I'm afraid Andrews back out again when Charles Charles gets the job uh, another indicator of his disfavor is the fact that a number of organizations that uh, formerly associated themselves with him have withdrawn the uh, one of the big London orchestras of which he was the patron has said they don't, they don't want him anymore so when you have that kind of thing that's a sort of a humiliating repudiation but but what it does say is that it's not only individuals or Republican voters uh, who really want to see the end of him but but uh, big organizations don't want to be many of them associated with him as well and and, and uh, that, that's a pretty strong indicator of, of the uh, of the trouble Andrew is in and, and how the notion of, of restoration of privileges is, is going to be a very difficult thing as we all recall uh, Andrew had a job as a trade ambassador for some years, I think it might have been 10 years, and seemed to be using those relationships to exploit his own position, develop financially favorable relationships, uh, uh, ultimately resulting in uh, friendships with people from places like Kazakhstan and, and, uh, and others in the Gulf. Uh, and. Uh, was pretty unpleasant when we discovered some of these things. He's uh, used his position to promote arms sales, uh, expecting commissions from, from doing so. Uh, all in all, all in all, uh, I'm afraid Andrew is just a bad apple. Uh, he, he is incorrigible. He needs very much to be seen to be extremely important and extremely rich and has lived a life of entitlement and privilege and, and, uh, and a lack of uh, being brought to account. Uh, and uh, so that's the way he is. Nothing will ever change him. It's, it is now <laughs> deeply embedded in his character. And that's why, uh, really, he can never be seen, never be seen to be uh, rehabilitated. I think the public won't stand for it. Another black mark on Andrew's uh, behavior was his performance in the famous BBC interview uh, when uh, he did two things which really are almost unforgivable. The first one was he was transparently lying. He was caught out on a number of things he said in the interview. Uh, they're all too well known now to, to go through with again, but uh, he came across as a liar. He also came across as uh, someone who was totally unsympathetic to the plight of the women who were exploited by Jeffrey Epstein. Uh, even though he was intensely involved, all of his comments were about protecting himself. There was never an apology. There was never any sense of, uh, gosh, what an awful experience it must have been for them. And that really makes him a kind of a brute. Uh, and uh, so that certainly won't uh, help his reputation any. Well, all of this questionable, even dodgy moral behavior, it, it's a taint to the royal brand, uh, and that's why he'll never be allowed back. Well, what's my take on this? Well, first of all, I'd, I'd like to say that there are several issues coming up, some several questions that will uh, have a big impact on, on the answer to the question. The first is the Maxwell trial that will take place probably in July on all of these charges of aiding and abetting Epstein's uh, financial uh, misconduct and, and uh, bad behavior and the uh, notion that uh, Andrew has been to various degrees involved in all of that. Uh, the uh, brother of uh, Ghislaine Maxwell has already said that they won't be calling him as a witness just because they think he's too unreliable uh, af 
after a particular after the BBC interview, they don't want any part of him, even though they're supposedly great friends. But the prosecution may well uh, call upon him. His name is obviously in Jelaine's black book, uh, and. Uh, so we don't know quite what the procedure will be. I, I rather doubt that uh, if he were charged, uh, uh, he wouldn't be extradited or anything like that. But, but uh, I, I think uh, it, it's going to heat up again when that trial takes place. And we, who knows with, with what result. It might even be that uh, Andrew decides to cooperate and testify with the FBI. But whatever happens there, that's going to be pretty interesting. The other uncertainty really is how long the queen will live. Uh, her mother lived to be over 100. Uh, the queen could live another five or 10 years. Um, and of course, during all of that time, uh, one guesses that she probably will protect Andrew. She's, of course, uh, a bit impatient with him and, and disappointed that he's embarrassed the family somewhat, but she, but she is likely to protect him. Uh, Charles, not so. Uh, and thus, uh, the question really is, uh, when will he take over the crown? So that's a, uh, that is, a, 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 at this point, a, a, an open question, but one that I think will affect the outcome. I guess my other thought here is that uh, Andrew exemplifies the uh, entitlement, privilege, and even arrogance of some members of, of the royal family. It's very damaging to the royal family. The public is getting less and less patient and accepting of this kind of behavior, and particularly the extravagance of the way in which they live. And thus, he simply cannot be allowed uh, by those trying to protect the brand and the image of the, uh, of the monarchy. He can't be allowed back in in any major way. There it is. <laughs> Uh, pretty unequivocal on my part, uh, but uh, uh, nonetheless a fascinating situation and an artifact of history in today's Britain. Well, hope you enjoyed that. If you do the usual, give me a like, subscribe, comment, notify, etc., etc., and I'll see you at the next one. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.